Welcome. Today we're going to cover really everything you need to know about Obsidian Sync. Uh, all the features it has, the occasional little drawbacks it has, which are very minor and just really an Obsidian thing. Uh, in general, around how you name your files, how to set it up on another device uh, once you've initially created your vault. Just so you know everything you need to know about Obsidian Sync. Before we do that, a few ways to support the channel. Number one, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Number two, take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education, and members get courses included. Buckle up, let's look at Obsidian Sync. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is actually create our new vault. So let's move this where you can see it. Uh, in mine, it's this little globe icon, and actually most other ones, it's uh, like a square or a rectangle with a circle inside to open another vault. So I'm going to open another vault. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually create another vault specifically for this. So we'll create a new vault. I'm going to call it sync test. And I'm going to put it in my documents folder. So it's here. I'm just create a new folder again, sync test. In my documents folder, open, create. So now I have my new vault here. And it's going to give me some stuff about live preview. So I'll take my old vault with my notes for this screencast and put it off to the other screen. So the first thing we want to do now is actually create a few files. So I'm going to say test sync file, best file to sync with testing stuff. And create another one, second best file. I really just want to have two files in here so that I have something uh, to use to sync. So now we're going to go down to our settings. So on Mac, it's actually command comma. I don't know the uh, official keyboard command on Windows, but you can do it by the gear down here. We'll hit settings. We're going to go to core plugins, and we're going to just type sync. So we'll turn this on by toggling our uh, little I guess radio toggle right here, and then we'll go to settings. So now we need to choose uh, which remote vault we're going to connect to. Hit choose. You can see I have my main vault, which is the one I work in all the time. I write all my notes where I just kind of keep track of everything. That's not what we want. So we'll create a new vault and I'm going to call it again, just sync test customized end to end encryption. You want this. The end to end encryption means that the, all the communication with the server, all your notes on the server are all totally encrypted with AES 256 encryption. Really good. If you don't know that, um, and you get to provide your own key right here. So I've actually already created one when I wrote about this in one password. So I'll open it. It's a long one um, because you do want them to be long and you need to write this down. If you do not uh, remember your key here, you can see in the red text right there. If you forget this password, any remote data will remain unusable forever. So you still have your files locally. As long as you have a local copy, that's great, but you will lose access to it on the server. So if you you know, only had it on one device, you lose that device, you don't have that data anymore. Let's go back over here and I'm going to bring up my key that I created, uh, Obsidian Test Vault, copy. It's a long one. Uh, and I would always create them in one password or Bitwarden or something so that you have a long random password you don't remember because if you can remember it, it's not secure. Now we'll create our vault and we'll connect to it. Now it's also going to tell me here, uh, if you connect your vault, it's going to merge your notes. Now I just created a new vault. We know that this is not an issue, but if you have an older vault, if you're working with multiple notes, you may have some merge conflicts in here. I'm not going to have that. So I'm just going to hit continue. I need to enter my password again. So we'll copy this from one password again. Unlock the vault. Thanks for just a second. And we're going to hit start syncing. So this is now synced. Now we can actually go to our uh, core plugins again, or we can go down to sync right here, sync settings. And this is where we have a whole bunch of different settings we can use for Obsidian Sync. This is what I really like about it. Um, we can look at our deleted files. We can view them. I'm not going to have any because we just created this vault, or I can bulk restore them. We can see our sync activity. Um, and then we can do selective sync. So if I had a folder I didn't want to sync, I'd come in here. And I choose it, but I don't have any folders, so I don't need to do that. If there's something that's really private that you don't want to sync, you can exclude it. Um, sync images, or sync audio, or sync videos, or PDFs. I leave them all off. I don't really put those types of files in my um, 
Obsidian database, but if you use PDFs in your Obsidian database, go for it. I actually keep all my PDFs, like kind of other people's thoughts, um, in Devon Think as my read it later service and as my other people's thoughts storage area. And it'll also sync all other unsupported file types. So just file types it doesn't know about. I don't know, maybe there's a CAD drawing you want to sync. And that will work as well. So Vault uh, settings version history. So it'll actually sync all the settings of your Vault as well. I think you should turn all these on. You want your main settings synced. You want your appearance settings, themes and snippets, hotkeys, active and core plugin, core plugin settings, everything synced. So this means that if you install a core plugin or a community plugin, it will actually sync it over to other devices and it will turn it on. It will set all your settings up so that they're the same across devices. I think that is like one of the superb reasons and one of the reasons I love Obsidian Sync. Um, so that it actually just keeps everything together so that it has a more smooth experience for myself as I use Obsidian. So now that it's on, let's actually create a version. So this is a version of the file. One of the things you can do in Obsidian is actually look at your versions of files. So we'll come into here and I'll right click and I'll say view sync version history. See, I've actually got a few versions. I've got the second best file. This is a right and then I've got the this is the version of the file. So this lets me either choose one of two options. I can copy this file to the clipboard or I can restore to this version. So I can come back and restore to this version. And now it has rolled back and restored. Do you sync history and again I have a version as well. So I could say restore to this version. Something else you may want to look at is copying the clipboard. If you have a long file and you're not sure exactly how it should merge and you need to manually merge it, then I would copy the clipboard, and create a new note, or you know keep that text somewhere else, look at it, and then do a manual merge. Obsidian Sync will actually keep these version histories for up to a year for you so that you have them. Now, one thing to remember, this is not a backup. So if you want to back up your files, I would not put them on iCloud as well. You're going to have sync conflicts with that. What I would do is recommend a service like Backblaze to back up your entire computer and all your files uh, at the same time. Now let's look at syncing my iPad to this device. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit the open another vault. And I'm going to create a new vault here on my iPad. And I'm going to call it again, just like I did, sync test. And one thing to remember on your mobile device is do not check the store and iCloud button if you're going to use Obsidian Sync. This will actually put the file in iCloud. You can't change it. So I hit create. And now I can open this up and pin the tab. And you can see again, open another vault. That's what it normally looks like. We're going to go to settings again. We're going to go to core plugins. We're going to search for sync. We'll toggle sync on and hit the options. I'm going to choose my vault. So I have two, I have my main vault and sync test. I'm going to connect it and then I am going to uh, open up one password. Found me. I'll copy the Obsidian sync test key, paste it in, unlock the vault. Thinks for a few seconds. Honestly, my main vault has a few thousand files. I don't find that it is a huge uh, weight to get even that a few thousand files synced. I can hit start syncing or manage excluded folders. We'll start syncing and we are done. So now I have my second best file with the version history. So I can come back in here and say from the iPad. And this is literally recording and happening, um, updating almost live on my Mac desktop in front of me. I can right click here or you can long press and I can say uh, view sync version history and I can look at again all of my versions of the file. One thing I'd love to see on the iPad, at least on the iPad Pro that we're looking at right now, is this does have room for like two panels, but it doesn't clearly on um, phones or other smaller devices. So I'd love to see that on the iPad. Now there are a few small caveats with sync and they're kind of just caveats with Obsidian in general. Can't use a colon in there. There's some other characters that are restricted and sync will actually fail. So if using any type of automation to create file names, then you'll actually see a warning kind of pop up here and say, nope, that doesn't work for us. Um, 
so you need to be careful about that. And if you look, uh, and there'll be some links in the description or in the full written post of this, the written post has screenshots that tells you, uh, shows you some forum posts or people are complaining or saying, hey, these types of files don't work. So just note that and be careful what you name your files. I actually like to do everything. So if I was going to do a book title, subtitle, I just stick to words, letters, and dashes. That's it. I don't do anything else because it's just going to create conflicts. Better to stick with words, dashes. That's it. Just have it like that. Ultimately, that is really everything you need to know about Obsidian Sync. That's how you set it up on other devices. That works basically the same for your iPhone. The only thing that I have found it takes a little while to sync sometimes is, say, theme settings. So I will, say, install a new theme on Mac. I'll go over to use it on my iPad, and I often find I have to quit Obsidian entirely and kind of have it resync entirely. Um, it doesn't actually change how the files sync, but it takes one or two opens for, like, say, a theme to update. Um, plugins seem to come immediately. It's a theme I notice take a little bit longer than some other uh, things to sync. Ultimately, that's it. If you like the video, thumbs up below. If you liked, if you loved it, I've got this backwards. If you like the video, thumbs up. If you, uh, you know, subscribe, all that other YouTube to junk. Uh, if you want to support the channel, become a member at curtisofkale.ca slash membership or take a course curtisofkale.ca slash education. If you're already on Skillshare, there are links to all my courses below on Skillshare so that you can just take them there with your membership. Have an excellent day.